Hi guys, it's your girl Steffi, and today I'm going to teach you guys how to make a hoodie. Now this is probably one of my most requests pieces to make because a hoodie is just, you know, once you know how to make a hoodie, a t-shirt, trousers, skirts, honestly, you are on your way to making even better things in digital fashion. Now I've got a surprise for you guys. I know not everybody has the time to, you know, spend to learn how to make patterns from scratch. So I've provided today's hoodie as a free file for you guys who don't have any time, who do you just want to get a hoodie. You guys can take that free file and use it as you like. But for those of you who want to get better at pattern making and actually understand how to make these patterns from scratch, then stay tuned with this tutorial and I will show you guys exactly how to make one. And on top of that, just because it's coming to the end of the year, I've decided to provide five additional files to help you guys get started in digital fashion. Now for you guys on Patreon, my patrons will get these files for free. But for you guys who are not on my Patreon, don't worry, you guys can still get it on my Patreon shop for a one-off fee. And I'm just going to show you guys what you will actually get with this pack. These outfits here are ones that I've created over the years and it's honestly, it took, took me around a year to get really comfortable with digital fashion, especially in terms of animating. So in this pack, you will get five animated garments, the UVs are all done and you will get two animated avatars which go from T pose to their walking pose and you can use all of these again and again. I would love to see what you guys will do with it and please tag me if you do use it. I would love to see how you take my base files and transform them using your own creativity. But for now, let's get back to the hoodie tutorial because that is what you came for. So let's jump into the tutorial. Okay, so we are in Clove 3D right now, but for you guys who use Marvelous Designer or Style 3D, just to let you know, this pattern, the one that we're gonna build, will work for any of those programs. So I have my own avatar here. I have imported it in. It's something I have made using Daz and Mixamo. And if you guys have watched this video on YouTube, which I do have my own tutorial on how to do it, Feel free to watch it, feel free to make your own version, you don't have to use this avatar. But just know that it has a walking cycle and I'll show you guys in the animation tab. It goes from T-pose to walking cycle, which I use a lot in my work. I just really like how the fabric moves when it's walking. So let's go back to the simulation tab and let's get building, let's do it. Okay, first thing, let's go to the rectangle here. And just to let you guys know, you could actually, if you want to speed up the process, you don't actually have to make this from scratch. There's a library here where you can go to, let's see, to avatar blocks, blocks, for the shirt, woman. They've already got some presets here, which you guys could, you know, use to start off your, I suppose, your base pattern and feel free to do that. I like to build my from scratch sometimes and when I'm in a rush, I like to use the blocks. When I'm not in a rush, I like to build it. So it's really up to you. But today we're gonna build it for those who want to learn how to make a hoodie. So we are going to get down with that. I'm gonna press X because I want to add points. And let's see, yes, we're gonna bring this press Z go down here and I've actually included the keystrokes in this tutorial because sometimes I click on my keyboard and I don't think about what it is because I've, I've used this program for so long and I know for you guys who are who are new to this you know having these keystrokes can be helpful so um, please <laughs> please look at the screen and at the bottom of the screen to see what keystrokes I use because a lot of times I really don't think about it. And actually, if, you, if you're not comfortable with the keystrokes, um, actually, let me try. <laughs> it's so much quicker with it. And once you guys do know it, it's so much quicker. So a lot of the times it's these, yeah, these are options that I'm using. So this, what I'm gonna use now is edit curvature, which is C, so you can press C as well. And you can curve it there. Okay, so this is a basic shirt pattern or at least half of it and I'm just gonna click on this and make sure the particle distance is 10. Now the higher the particle distance the more the bigger the polygons and I'll show you actually I wonder if there's a way yes huge 
polygons and if I make it smaller if I make the particle distance like 5 you see it gets smaller it's usually on 20 for standard and it just means that when you're simulating the higher the number the quicker the simulation the lower n the number the slower the simulation but the more accurate it will be so when we're working I like to work with 10 and then when I do simulate I like to go down maybe push the numbers down to five or even smaller if needed okay so let's go back to this uh, yeah basic shirt isn't it press Z move this down okay let's go for something like this and see what we can adjust I like to work with half because there's a really cool feature in this program and actually in a lot of these, whether it's Marvelous Designer or Stealth 3D, you can just duplicate it to the other side and you don't have to rebuild it again and it's my most favourite shortcut to use. So I highly recommend you guys use it, it's just, speeds, it speeds up the process quite a bit. Now I want to create a sort of baggier, maybe off shoulder or drop shoulder hoodie and uh, we're gonna try we're gonna try I do a lot of tweaking sometimes I build it and then I tweak it um, to my liking actually I say sometimes it's most of the time so I assume it's gonna be something like this and probably we want baggier sleeves so I'm just gonna make this armhole a bit wider Okie dokie, so I want to also make this, I'm just going to select this, and again, you can find it here, edit pattern, said, move it this way a little bit so that it's a bit wider than we want. And of course, you want to use this body as a reference to how big you want it to be, because of course, if we make this fitted, which you totally could, just make it, you know, more fitted to this body shape if you want it a bit more baggy you can make it a bit wider and that's the sort of look I like to go for oh my god please don't do that okay <laughs> okay so I'm gonna press a to select this you're gonna right click mm, where is it I don't know how to do it with the keyboard shortcut I'm trying to look for duplicate ah is it this it's the metric pattern I know it as control D control D means to duplicate okay so I'm guessing it is this it will also work, so if I control Z that, if you press control D, already done. Okay, so they are actually duplicate, which means if I move this up here, this side moves up there. So yes, that's exactly what we want. I'm also going to, shall we merge these? Let's merge these. I'm gonna press Z, let's click these two sides, hold shift while you're doing that and right click, press merge. What that has done is actually make it into one piece, okay? Now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna press A again to select this piece here. Press, we're just gonna copy and paste, control C, control V. This is gonna be the back. Move it. There we go. Now what I like to do is I like to go on this mode, which, what is it called? Texture surface, Alt 2, because you can see the normals then. You can see this side's white, this side's darker. Okay, so even if we were to change the color, I don't know, something like this, it'll still be darker on the other side, okay? And for you guys who don't know, normals are, to explain it all you guys got to know is that with the normals you don't want them facing the outside you always want your normals facing the inside so we have got to rotate this and yes that is looking good and now we can get to the fun part we can sew so I'm just going to shimmy this over a little bit more and this as well So now we are going to go to this one, segment sewing or press N, I'm going to click it here, oh, this side to this side. Please make sure you are sewing the same side and what I mean by that, please do not do this. You see how that's twisted? You don't want that, okay? You do that, it's going to it's gonna sew twisted, okay? So 
whatever side you click on, whether you do it in a 2D side, let's say this is the 2D side, you can do it here, right? And or you could sew it in the 3D side from here to here. Oh, hello, come on. There we go. And because it's duplicated, we duplicated the pattern, it automatically did the other side as well, which is perfect. We like efficiency. Same thing here, don't sew the side so straight. Make sure your lines are straight, always. Okay, now we could simulate in this mode, which is, I believe, the normal mode. I like to simulate in GPU mode because I just like it to be a bit faster. It is a little bit more inaccurate, but personal preference, I mean, honestly. Um, try it all, have a go yourself, okay? This is the normal one, which is what we're on. I'm gonna sw switch to GPU just because Oh, no. <laughs> this always happens. Okay, it's all right. We've made a skirt. Change of plans. We're making a skirt. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Press Ctrl Z. Right, the reason why that has um, done that, actually, I think is because... Let me show you the difference between this one. Maybe this won't fail if I do it this way, yeah. For some reason, I don't know why. Every time I do that with GPU, it just falls. But it's fine. And I said it was quicker. I... If somebody knows, please, please let me know. Okay, so this worked. And I thought this was going to be a lot baggier than what we made it. It's looking not exactly fitted, not exactly baggy. It's like in the middle. Do you know what I mean? So now let's see. What I want to do. I'm gonna make it a bit wider and a bit longer because right now it's almost like a crop hoodie. I don't know if I want that right now. So we can grab, let's see, press Z. I select this side, I select this side because I want to keep them the same. Hold Shift, drag them out. Okay, nothing's happened because we haven't simulated. So we're going to do that. Press spacebar to simulate. And if this happens, just on simulation mode, just gently pull it, pull. Same with this side. Okay. Meh, we're slightly getting there. Make it longer. We can make it longer. Great, okay. I think we're gonna add a waistband and the way we're gonna go about this is, you can do it so many different ways. You could, you know, get a rectangle and actually redraw the waistband here, or you could take it from this actual pattern here and take a slice, like slice it from this one here. So honestly, up to you. I am going to, I think I'm gonna draw it. I just select that rectangle there, waistband. I want it to be a little bit slimmer. Slimmer? I don't know. Shorter. Shorter? You know what I mean. Smaller than <laughs> this. And we are also gonna, let's see, go here. What's this called? Ah, arrangement points. Now, the reason why my avatar is not synced to this arrangement points and this A pose is because I've imported my own avatar and Clove 3D doesn't recognize that, you know, the points from my own avatar. So just use this as a guide and then you can rearrange, especially on the arms, you can just move it. So I am going to click on this middle section here because it will curve it. Let me just turn this back off. Nice curve, we like that. Okay, and I am going to duplicate that as well. So we are going to press Ctrl D, duplicate it. Okay, where did that go? Here. Move it to this side, rotate. There we go. And now we're gonna sew this all together. So again, sewing lines, make sure they're straight. If I can get this right, this will be great. 
right? Okay, come on. Yes. And here to here. Good. And also we want to sew the waistband to this. So let's go. Ooh, ooh, actually, time out. <laughs> Don't sew it yet. Because I have done this so th I've done this mistake so many times. Um, we have we have uh, what is it called it's got symmetric pattern it's duplicated both these are duplicate duplicates of each other which means if I was to sew this waistband to this one it will also sew this to this which is sometimes not what we want and sometimes it messes up so maybe I'll show you actually because sometimes I forget that I've duplicated something and I'm like oh let me just do that so do you see how this has sewn to this and then this side has sewn to this one? We don't want that. In fact, we just want this whole section to be sewn to this half of the waistband. So this is when, I'm just gonna press Ctrl Z. Let's undo this. If we press A. This is where we can remove the duplicate, the mirror, mirror duplicate. They're copying each other, right? So we can remove it. So you're gonna to have to right click and press remove links editing here. Do the same thing on the, on the back. Uh, right click and press remove links editing. Now, if I was to sew this, I'm gonna actually use, not that, free sewing. We like to free sewing. So go all the way here to here. Done. And now it's not going to this side. Do you see that? And then uh, go to the back. So I'd like to see what I'm sewing here. Go here and go here. There we go. And always before you simulate, please, please, please check the sewing lines because you don't want to cry about it later. I've done that many times. So it's not worth the pain. Not worth the pain. Um, that looks good to me. Press baseball simulate now that essentially what that has done is cinch the hoodie in the waist area I think you know I wanted it to be smaller so that we can have these nice folds coming through so that baggy look where it's like you know a bit puffy I like that if you don't like that you can make your waistband the same length as your main body I still learning technical terms here but you, you can make this waistband here the same length as this and you will not have as many of these folds there all right so far looking good now we can make sleeves let's get onto the sleeves um here click on this what's this called rectangle oh I don't know if I want it that big um actually yeah sure we can always edit it it's fine um, I'm gonna call this hoodie. Hoodie material. There we go. No, please don't make another one. Press A so we can select it. And what we're gonna do? We're gonna make a typical sleeve shape. So again, all of this you can get from the library here in user block. Totally up to you. If you want to save time, you can do that. If you want to learn how to do it, you can do that as well. Ooh, that is dead in the middle, isn't it? 250, 250. If you want, you could also, if you just want to be sure that it's in the middle, you can right click. Um, actually, before I say that, press X. Make sure you're, you're on point mode. You go to here, add point. Uh, put your mouse on the line, right click. You can split it uniformly. And you can split it, you know, uniformly in so many different ways here. But I only want one. I want it in the middle. Do we want it in the middle? Maybe we'll, we'll go free. And I'll... I'm trying to decide here. No, actually, you know what? We'll just have one. Let's keep it simple. Sorry. One. <laughs> and what, that's, what that is going to do is this is going to be the beginning of our sleeve which doesn't look like a sleeve but we're gonna get there 
I'm um, gonna press X again. I'm just gonna add a point here, 60 there. Uh, sometimes I eyeball it. I'm sure if you guys wanna be precise, do it the proper way. But sometimes I just like to eyeball it with these numbers here. Especially if it's like, if it's a digital piece where nobody's gonna wear it, then measurements don't matter too much. If you guys are gonna go into physical production, it matters. So take your pick, know what you're gonna be designing for. And if you are designing for, you know, physical production, please measure, be accurate. Um, okay, let's go to this. I'm gonna press C to curve, use the curve line curve option here okay and then here I'm gonna make this sort of shape so I'll go down and this is a typical sleeve shape something like this now I am going to find this thing now where is it oh my god it's huge probably is too big you know there is probably a mathematical way to calculate how much or how big it should be but even just looking at the size of this mm, I'm not sure <laughs> it looks like an aeroplane wing it's massive okay uh, what I like to do sometimes actually before we before we simulate I like to, I want to cinch this in so I am going to drag this over hold shift to keep, make sure it's in line just a little bit something like that okay oh my god it is massive isn't it <laughs> uh, I am just gonna simulate this and let it fall sometimes I like doing that or you guys could either use this and actually just you know select this you could drape it like this if you want so that is in the right place so honestly um, you could do this option, you could just move this into its right place, or you could just move it here, let it drape. That wasn't a great, good draping step, come on. <laughs> Try again, angle it better. That's a bit better, okay. And the reason why I do this is because I like to, because you have to sew these two sides together. So this side and this side, and when it's flat, it's really awkward for it to sew flat. It just doesn't work as well. So take your pick. Um, this sleeve is looking quite big though. So maybe before we sew and press control Z, we are going to try sew this and then I'm going to use the, Ah, oh, there's a sewing, oh, I forgot what it's called. What is it called? Is it this? Edit sewing. This is going to be super helpful in a bit, and I'll show you why. So let's see. Uh, what are we going to do? Sew. We're going to sew. Press M, actually. We're going to do some free sewing. So we are tackling this side, right? So you're just going to know which side you are sewing onto. I'm going to start in the middle here. Go down. Now we are going to go to the front here, which is going to be this one here. Also go down the same direction. You can see straight sewing lines right there. Next, we need to tackle the back. Um, press M again, free sewing. Go down from the middle and this time it's going to be this side, isn't it? Fab. Okie dokie. Now, because we've got the sewing down, now we can press B or we press this one up here, this button, and you can actually see how far out you are with the red number. If you guys look at the red number here, 60.8, 58.6. Now, the red number, the closer you are to zero, the more accurate it is in terms of the size. So this is too big. What if I went down with this? Let me see. 47.1, 39.4, we, we are getting there. I'm gonna move this part down as well, not make it so high. We're gonna adjust the curve so that the curve is a bit smoother because right now I've ruined it, but it's fine because we can tweak it. There, something like this. Uh, 
And let's see now actually, now that we got 16.9, see? That made a difference, 16.4. So the height and how wide it is really affects how, I suppose, how different the number's gonna be. Um, what if we shimmy this over, make it a bit smaller again? Oh, press B. 7.57. Okay. <clears throat> okay, what I'm going to do now is let's tweet this one more time. I wonder if I can move this up just a little bit. Gonna try and eyeball it, make sure it's roughly around the same length on both sides. And now if I press B, check this side, 4.5, 4.3. We are getting there. We are slowly getting there. Shimmy in one more time. Press B. 2.2, 2.4. And if we move this down just a little bit. Point five. What was that? How have we gone up? Hold on. Oh, okay, we go. Press B. How do we go up a number? Okay, let's try this again. Press B again. That did not work. A lot of tweaking. I think as long as we get it close to nearly zero, we're good. Let's press B. It just got even. No, we're gonna control set. <laughs> it went up. Okay, press B. You know what? We're gonna stick with two. Let's see what it looks like. It is, pre it is pretty close. press simulate, you can press this button here or press spacebar. Okay. There we go. And we are going to sew the bottom now. So we're going to press N for segment sewing. So this side to this side. And we're going to press spacebar. Done. Nice. And of course, we're going to use my favorite tool, press A, and we're going to duplicate, control D. There we go. And I'm hoping it has sewn. Oh, it hasn't. Shame. We, it's okay. We can sew it ourselves. So this is going to be the other side. Press M for free sewing. We're going to sew the front first down here go to this side okay always double check your sewing lines here and gonna rotate to the back and we're gonna press M go down this side and so this side and press simulate nice we have got a jumper or a sweatshirt looking pretty sweet gotta say myself now I'm looking at this and I want to make it more of a drop shoulder. So right now, it's not really drop shoulder. Let's see if we can change that. So I wonder actually if we can actually make this duplicate again. If I press, I'm gonna press A. I'm highlighting both, holding shift. Symmetric pattern with sewing, symmetric pattern. Yes, because they're the same, we haven't edited them. We only unlinks them and we're just relinking them. Does that make sense? So now if I move, let's say this corner, this part here, it should move the other side. Yes. Great, great, great. So now what we're gonna do, let me see. I'm gonna make this like more like this. A 
just readjust the curves, make sure that they are looking fine. Okay, hey, let's press simulate and see what happens. And also because we adjusted the sleeve, we got to check, I'm sorry, not the sleeve, the armhole, we got to check whether these are okay. So what is it? What is it now? Pressing B, 15.4, 15.2. I probably want to adjust that now. Does that mean we need to make it bigger or smaller? That's the question. Oh, we gotta make it smaller. Okay. Press B again. 11.9, 12.1. See what we can do here. B 1.4, 1.4. Okay, that's more like it. So let's press simulate. Now for you guys who are working in T-Pose, this is going to be a very important because a lot of people like to work in A-Pose because it's more relaxed, you can see how the fabric actually drapes a lot better. With T-Pose, everything kind of bunches up around the shoulder so you can't really see how it's going to drape until you simulate. So again, take your pick, a lot of people do prefer A-Pose just for that reason but it is not the end of the world if you do use a t-pose okay now I want to make this I want to make this leaf a lot baggier right now I feel like it's just reaching probably it's a little bit baggy and I'm press okay I feel like it could be even baggier, the sleeve. Because right now it's okay, but it's not how I would like it. So I'm gonna press Z, and I'm gonna highlight these two points. It should highlight the other two points if I'm correct, and move them as well. Let's see if it does. Nope, doesn't. I was wrong, highlight the other side. Move them down. Move it down again. Do you want it to be really baggy? Maybe is that too much? Maybe we go up a little bit. Highlight both sides. Hold shift and highlight it. Move it up. Yeah, we got something like that. And because I've moved the armholes again, the sleeve needs to be adjusted. It's on 68. Move it over, press B, 12. A, move it over, press shift. Now press B to check again. 23, gone too far. 12 and 12. So maybe it needs to be a bit smaller. Press B again. Ah, oh, I can't move these numbers. Sometimes for me it's like a guessing game. Press B, 15. All right, I'm gonna go a little bit more this way. Press B again. Seven, okay, we're heading in the right direction. Slide it over. Press B, check, 2.4, 2.4 is pretty good, press B again, 6.8, we've gone too far, 2.5 was better, and I'm also going to make this a little bit shorter, there, and I just love the duplicate function because this, it's, this side's already done, okay, let's simulate, press spacebar, that's more like it. That is the look I'm going for. Now if you guys like fitted sleeves, go for it. I just don't want that. I would like something baggy. And this is more like it for me. Nice. It's a bit more like a relaxed fit. And you can just tweak the way it drapes in simulation mode. Now I would like to add some cuffs, I think that's important. So I'm going to turn off simulation mode, cuffs, let's go to Z, press the side, oh, what is that? Edit pattern, edit pattern, right click, we are going to offset as, inter as internal line, there should be a red line here which you should be able to see 
probably too close you can't see it you can see it now what if we made it something like 50 and then we press ok that is going to be our cuff and it should duplicate on the other side yes so it doesn't matter which side you're working on for the sleeve if they're duplicates they will do the same thing on the other one so we're going to right click press cut and sew and we are going to make the cuff a little bit smaller almost like how we did it with the waistband so that it cinches in a little bit and we're going to press spacebar and hope that this works and for some reason this has what happened there it's okay which side is that that's this side press m just sew it again i don't know why that came off but it's fine uh, that would go yeah, wrong side this side we're facing the back so we do the back first oh got it wrong again this side press this there we go segment sewing is that segment sewing no i press m that's free sewing and press M again for free sewing here. Go down here and we want to make sure we go to the front here. Press spacebar to simulate. Cool. Now the cuffs look not tight enough for me. I want to make them even smaller. Let's do that. Better. Again just personal preference at the end of the day and actually let me double check these here ah oh, particle distance I forgot to change them you can see how it looks a bit janky you can actually see the polygons here it, like, it looks almost like a bit rigid so if I show you here that's what it looks like to me it looks very janky very like not smooth we want it smooth, so we're going to highlight these two sleeves and we totally forgot to change particle distance. We're going to make it 10. And if, you know, it's already smoother looking at it now, but if you simulate, it looks even smoother now. Okay, so if you were to push it to 5, it's going to look even more smoother. Um, let me just double check with this. Yeah, that looks good. I might even make the waistband a bit wider i think i might make it similar uh width to the cuff and if something gets stuck just put it out in simulation mode you see that it's getting stuck in the body there put it out cool all right we have got a hoodie here it is looking more like a crop hoodie isn't it could make it longer if you don't want it so short just go to this part here and extend it down and you'll be all good okay so now we're going to create a hood you are going to go to polygon here press h if you want a keyboard shortcut we are going to draw a shape like this actually i won't draw it so close to this part let's go up a bit well, actually, uh, the reason why I was going so close, I was using the head as a reference. So what we can actually do, grab all of these, move it down. Okay. So again, roughly, you're going to use the size of the head. And of course, you decide whether you want the hood really tight or really baggy. Totally up to you. I'm gonna press here. we're gonna make a shape like this <laughs> and honestly it's uh for me every time I make a hood I'm like it's roughly about this shape sometimes it's guesswork okay I'm gonna press set now and I'm just gonna make sure that these curves are looking smooth I'm gonna rotate this now I can see already this hood is not going to fit the avatar's head. Look how small it is. So this is where you need to put it by the... Oh, hello. Don't do that. <laughs> put it by the side of their head. And actually, we can just slowly... Oh, 
press Z. I only just want one point. If you need to make it bigger at the back, make it bigger. It's not a problem. Something like that. you can readjust to how you like something like this there we go and of course what we're going to do is press a select this and we are going to duplicate it by pressing ctrl d fab that's exactly what we wanted now we are going to press m we're going to sew this side Now we're going to press M, I'm going to sew from this side to this side, nice. And also we're going to sew the bottom as well. And actually, oh, I think I might want to sort out the collar situation before I actually simulate these. So actually, hold the fold there because I actually haven't, I haven't shifted or adjusted the neckline. So I'm going to highlight these, press Ctrl K, we're going to freeze it temporarily so it doesn't move when we simulate this let me just have a look mm, with the neckline here now i'm going to change the neckline the back is going to be higher than the front which means i need to unlink these now remove links editing so right click remove links editing and they shouldn't be linked anymore so now if i press z i'm going to select a point here if i move that up the other side oh the other side shouldn't move here, right? So we're just going to adjust this so it's a lot smoother. I don't know, something like that. If we look at the back. Now if we look at the front, I just want to make sure that it goes down just a little bit more, just a smidge. Just readjusting the neckline here. Okay, press spacebar. Now you can see this, what happened here, <laughs> that was meant to be the hood, but it's um it was trying to calculate the sewing, but because we froze it, it's it cannot move. Okay, so now turn off simulation mode and we're gonna press Ctrl K to unfreeze these. And now we need to sew this section here at the bottom to the press A, move these down. So we're going to take it half half I believe, let's see how we're going to do this. I think we are going to do it like this. Um, go to M and N sewing here. Or do we need M and N sewing? No, I think um, segment sewing might be enough actually so if I go from here and I press this that should be fine and if I go from the back I press this again checking checking the sewing lines making sure that they are straight other side this side to this side and then this side to this side let's hope that this works Press space. Okay. I thought I made this big enough. Clearly, not evidently not. I wanted a, uh, I wanted a baggy hoodie with a baggy hood as well. So if you guys like this tightness, go for it. I would like to make it a lot bigger. 
and so how we can counter that i think if we make this longer let's try that press simulate now i know that's messed up a little bit but it's fine just tug it in simulation mode should be okay and sometimes if it gets stuck on the ear just gently you just need to pull it out there and also this hood i need to change the particle distance because i can see it's looking a bit janky so i'm going to select both make this particle distance 10 there we go that's a bit more baggy that's what we want and I might even just extend it a bit more this side and to just keep it still and to just keep it still whilst I'm moving it I'm gonna press W and you're gonna left click and what that has done is it's, it's made a pin that if I move this it's not gonna move anywhere so that it doesn't flop about whilst I'm tugging so it keeps it in that place and you can actually move these only in simulation mode though if you go if you go off simulation mode it's not gonna work so just know that okay this is looking good I think I want it to be baggier <laughs> I guess I like baggy hoods. So what I'm gonna do now is just, I'm gonna delete select a pin. I right click on it, click on that, and unsimulate. I'm gonna do this one more time. Let's see if we can make it longer. Let's see if that affects it. And maybe a bit wider here. So it really depends how you guys want it to look. That's probably too baggy for my liking. Probably don't want it to stick right on the head. Actually, it might be just right. Let's see how we can adjust this. I think I quite like this. All right. Not bad, not bad. So with hoods, I like to make a different material for them because I don't like them looking all floppy how it is right now. I mean, if that's the look you're going for, keep it. But I like to just, let me copy this. Hood. I'm gonna get this and assign it here. Let's make it a different color so you guys can actually see. Right? Now, in this texture here, I like to go all the way down to physical property and choose, I like leather lambskin. And you see what it's just, the difference it's made it a bit firmer stronger it doesn't look as floppy and I prefer that look so that is just my preference of course guys feel free to play with the uh, physical properties here there's so many options on what type of material you would like it to be but I when I want more structure I always go for denim um, and leather because and full grain leather leather lambskin full grain leather they've got a bit more toughness to them a bit more structure I would say what do we think about the hood do I like it let me see zoom out and actually I think the way that the collar how tight the collar is affects the way that it drapes so I'm actually going to make the collar section here go out a little bit I'm gonna select both I'm gonna shimmy them, out, shimmy them out a little bit here I think they're too it's too tight simulate that and then we are also just going to adjust this section here and I think at the end of the day you guys could actually stop the tutorial here <laughs> you've made a hoodie if you want to add pockets if you want to add the drawstrings or the strings the straps you guys feel free to do that but we have a basic hoodie right here
And I guess one more thing I like to do, just to give it a bit more structure, is I like to just press Z. I'm going to right click and add offset and as internal line. Maybe make that 20. 10. Oh, no. 2010. 10. And if I add another one here, press OK. What I like to do here is, and this is all within my design as well, I like to just select both right click, cut and sew. And what it does is it adds this strip here, which I am going to add another texture here, copy that. I'm going to call it strip there. And we're going to highlight these two in the middle, assign them. And with this strip, I am going to do the physical property again. Where is it? Trim full grain level. Let's try that. And you can see it kind of actually like you can just see what it does. Even if I press Control Z, it just gives it that structure, which I really like. Like I'm a fan of this shape. Without it, the hood's always going to be a little bit floppy. If you want to, you could always make this double layer and have this structure or the left uh, full grain trim, trim full grain leather in the inside so that you can't see it on the outside. Like, feel free to do that as well. Um, I like it also just because for design purposes, it looks pretty nice. So now it's just a matter of tweaking of how you'd like this to look. I think if I, I'm gonna make this, let's let this again, this whole side, I'm gonna make this longer again, and I just wanna see how it falls, because the longer it is, the baggier it gets as well, and you could even drape it down here, it could just fall down, I'm gonna move it so this doesn't cover the face fully. Okay, we are really getting there, slowly getting there. Um, I'm just going to make sure that this is going to be a curve as well. And I'm going to select the other side because now it's not duplicated. We're just going to bring this down a little bit. And we're going to press C to curve it as well. Something, something like that. Same here. Just grab this side. Make sure it's just a nice curve between the two. right now the waistband is eating it there we go and even just curving it is just adding a bit more of that puffiness to it as well this is pretty much the design I'm just gonna copy some trousers onto this scene just so that this avatar has something to wear on the bottom okay so now this has trousers now we just got a few more finishing touches to do I'm just gonna make sure that's a particle distance of 10 now this is going to be animated right and there's a few things you guys need to know about animating when you guys have something like capes or jackets or hats they need to be pinned because if not they're just gonna slip and fall because of gravity and with this hood i like to keep it up so i'm just gonna hold on there's this part that's not right here i'm gonna press w tack it just pull it out see if we can fix that section Delete selected pin. Okay, let's try to shape this the way we would like it to be. I'm gonna go to this side and we're gonna press tack on avatar. I'm gonna press the center and the top of the head here. Just tack it there. It lets me on the head there. That should hopefully keep it from dropping off. Unless you guys don't want it on the head, you can just slide it down and it would work that way as well. And anything else to note for animation? UVs. I was thinking, well, there's something that we're missing. Go to UV editor. Here we go. Uh, right click, resets UV to 2D arrangement. Select all, right click. Actually, don't need to select, I believe. Just right click. Uh, fit all UVs to zero to one. 
press OK, it is very important that you scale these in the same proportion so that they don't get warped for when you're texturing. So I'm just gonna, I always hold shift when I'm scaling them up and I always scale them up at the same size. Now this is just organization now, you just gotta reorganize everything, make sure they are not too close to each other so that when you texture, you've got some space. You can even align these if you want to make it align, right click, align, top, and align it just like that. And I'm gonna grab these, move them down, sleeve here, here, move this up. These small parts can be slotted wherever, so I just wanna get all of these big chunks in and the small parts can be slotted in. These are the trousers, make sure they're not touching, that's too close, so we're gonna move these over just a little bit. And Here. and you can just slot everything in as long as everything has their own space make sure all of these are layered correctly because when you do texture them in another program and with Photoshop or when you want to connect them in a free program just having them labeled will save you the pain later so make sure it's all labeled correctly now here we go, I think it's pretty much done. And you can put them into different squares, as in UDIMS. You could have the trousers in this square, you could have these in another square, but for when I transfer them into AR, into some formats needed for other programs, they might need it in one UV square, which you just gotta be careful. Depends which format you're gonna have it in. So if you're gonna have it for like a game ready environment, have it all in one square. If that doesn't matter, you're not gonna have it in a game ready environment, then you can put them in all of these different UV squares. I've got a video about that if you guys wanna check it out. It's um, on my channel. And if you guys are interested in going into AR or into the metaverse, then check that out because it tells you how to prepare your files. Okay, this looks good. This is looking peachy. We can now go back to simulation and just press simulate double. I just want to double check everything. Cuffs are good. Everything looks fine. The waistband is underneath here. You can pull it down if you want. I've just kind of tucked it in just a little bit. You can pull it down here if you wanted to. But again, just preference. And this looks good to go going to turn off simulation let's go to animation when we're animating we want to make sure that it's in this mode not in the normal mode so animation stable and I am going to animate this and let's see how well it does so we're gonna press this record button here a few moments later and that is done so I think that took roughly about a minute two minutes I don't know I was just in there daydreaming but it's fine it's worked <laughs> Um, make sure you're on real time instead of frame stepping and just have a look. Looks pretty good to me. And as you see, we've pinned the hood so that the hood is not going to go anywhere, it's not going to travel. And I am pretty happy with the results. Now you guys can add any extras on that you want to, but this is pretty much ready for texturing and just bringing it into another program. Um, if you want to keep the animation, make sure you export as uh, Alembic. And I think for the textures, make sure you export the OBJ. Again, got another video on that, please check it out. There's a lot of technical terms or technical aspects to this for when you move it into animation. So just make sure that you are fully prepared for that ride into animation because it does take a bit of figuring out you know where all the puzzle pieces go thank you so much for watching i hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial i'm trying to make more tutorials where you feel like you don't feel like napping you, you know those tutorials where you feel like you're about to fall asleep 
try my best not to make one of those for you guys. So please let me know if you guys have enjoyed the tutorial. Don't forget that this piece is free for you guys to download from my Patreon shop. If you guys don't want to bother creating the hoodie from scratch, you can just download it from there. And of course, my patrons, you guys will be getting this whole pack for free. And for you guys who are not on my Patreon but you still want to get this pack, then make sure to head over to my Patreon shop where you can purchase it. So if you guys want to learn about tutorials or learn more about what is happening in industry or what projects I'm working on as a digital fashion artist, then please let me know. I will make sure to film more of those types of videos.